Are faster charging speeds and longer battery life finally coming to the Pixel phones? With the Pixel 10 series expected to launch in August 2025, it's clear Google has something big in store. It's not just another release, it's the 10th generation anniversary of Pixel devices. The lineup will likely include the Pixel 10, Pixel 10 Pro, and the large Pixel 10 Pro XL. Everyone's talking about the new Tensor G5 chip, the first one made fully in-house and built using a 3 nanometer process by TSMC. That means better performance and power efficiency. But what about the thing most users care about every day? Battery life and charging. Let's talk about the battery capacities first. According to leaks, the Pixel 10 and Pixel 10 Pro are expected to have 4,700 mAh batteries. The Pixel 10 Pro XL could go slightly bigger, with a 5,060 mAh cell. These aren't huge upgrades from the Pixel 9 series, but the efficiency gains might still give us longer screen time. This improvement likely comes from the new Tensor G5 processor. Unlike the older chips, which were built on Samsung's platform, the Tensor G5 uses a much more efficient 3 nanometer process by TSMC. That should help the phones use less energy for the same tasks. Another smart change is the rumored switch to the MediaTek T900 modem, which is known to be less power hungry than the Samsung made modems used in earlier models. This could be a big deal, especially during 5G tasks or video streaming, which usually drain the battery quickly. Also helping stretch battery life. LTPO screens on the Pro and Pro XL models, which can scale the refresh rate from 120 Hz all. The way down to Wern Hertz. This means the phone can save energy when displaying still images or reading content. As for actual usage, Google promises all-day battery life, with up to 100 hours possible when using extreme battery saver mode. While other phones, especially in the Chinese market, may boast battery sizes of over 7,000 mAh, Google is focusing on balance and software-based power management. Now let's talk charging. Big news here is the potential support for QI2 wireless charging across all three Pixel 10 models. QI2 improves coil alignment using magnets, charges more efficiently at up to 15 watts, and reduces heat. This is similar to Apple's MagSafe or the newer Samsung Galaxy wireless charging systems. That means no more guessing where to place your phone on the pad. It'll just snap into place and start charging properly. Wired charging is also expected to stay strong. Using Google's 45-watt charger, the Pixel 10 and 10 Pro may charge up to 55% in just 30 minutes. The Pixel 10 Pro XL could reach around 70% in half an hour. Similar to what we saw with the Pixel 9 Pro XL, wireless charging will also remain. Can a foldable phone really be thinner than a regular smartphone? That's exactly what Samsung is trying to prove with its upcoming Galaxy Z Fold 7. And if the leaks are true, it could become the world's thinnest foldable phone ever made. Samsung has taken a lot of heat in the past for its foldable devices being bulky and thick compared to others in the market. But this year, it looks like they're flipping the script. According to a very reliable tipster known as Ice Universe, the Galaxy Z Fold 7 will measure just 3.9 millimeters thin when unfolded. And when folded, it will still be only 8.9 millimeters thick. To put that into perspective, it'll be thinner than any foldable phone we've seen so far, and even slimmer than many regular smartphones. Now, of course, making a phone this thin comes with some compromises. But surprisingly, Samsung isn't cutting corners on battery life. The Galaxy Z Fold 7 is expected to pack a 4400 mAh battery. That's quite decent for a foldable of this size. And Samsung is reportedly using new battery and charging technology, to make it all work inside such a thin frame. This focus on slim designs isn't just limited to the Fold series. According to the same source, the upcoming Galaxy Z Flip 7 will also follow the same approach. It's said to come with a 4300 mAh battery, which was already confirmed through a certification listing last week. Samsung clearly wants to stay competitive, and their new strategy seems to be making thinner and lighter phones instead of going all out with massive battery sizes. This idea is expected to carry over to other models too. For example, the Galaxy S26 is also rumored to be designed as a slim phone, focusing on form rather than battery bulk. As for performance, the Galaxy Z Fold 7 will reportedly run on the Snapdragon 8 Elite processor, 
which should offer top-tier speed and efficiency. Meanwhile, the Galaxy Z Flip 7 is rumored to use the Exynos 2500 chip, which could help Samsung cut costs in some regions without affecting overall performance much. Both foldables are expected to be announced in July 2025, and they'll launch, with Android 16 and One UI 8.0 right out of the box. But that's not all. Samsung is also gearing up to release another ultra-thin smartphone, the Galaxy S25 Edge. A recent leak says it will be just 5.8 millimeters thin, making it one of the slimmest non-foldable phones ever made. This upcoming Galaxy S25 Edge will reportedly feature a 6.7-inch display, a 200-megapixel plus 12-megapixel dual rear camera setup, a 12-megapixel front camera, the same Snapdragon 8 Elite chip, 12 GBs of RAM, storage options of 256 or 512 GBs, and a 3900 mAh battery. Clearly, Samsung is going all in on sleekness this year, aiming to break design records while still keeping their performance and battery life in check. What if Apple started releasing new iPhones twice a year instead of just once? That might actually be happening soon. A new report suggests that Apple is seriously considering changing its iPhone launch strategy. And if this is true, it could be one of the biggest shifts the company has made in years. Right now, Apple usually releases all major iPhones in the fall, with the spotlight mainly on the high-end Pro models and a few other versions. It's been this way for more than a decade, but that could soon change. Apple is reportedly planning to adopt a biannual iPhone release cycle. In other words, we might start seeing new iPhones twice a year, once in the first half and again in the second half. The reason? Competition is heating up, especially in big markets like China, where other brands like Samsung and OnePlus are already rolling out new phones earlier in the year. If Apple joins them with spring launches, it could close the marketing gap, grab attention for a longer period, and spread out the spotlight between premium and budget models. Right now, everything comes out at once, and the cheaper phones often get ignored. So what's the timeline looking like? This year, it's business as usual. Apple is still expected to launch the iPhone 17 series in the fall, probably in September 2025. That includes the iPhone 17, 17 Pro, 17 Pro Max, and the new iPhone 17 Air, which might be a thinner or lighter model, similar to the iPad Air strategy. But starting in 2026, we might see a real change. In spring 2026, Apple may launch a more affordable iPhone called the iPhone 17e. That would be earlier than the usual timeline for budget iPhones, which have often arrived under the iPhone SE name every couple of years. Then, in late 2026, Apple is reportedly planning to launch a big wave of devices, possibly the iPhone 18 Pro, iPhone 18 Pro Max, and a new model like the iPhone 18 Slim or iPhone 18 Air. But here's where it gets interesting. The regular iPhone 18 might actually skip the fall launch and instead be released in early 2027, alongside the next iPhone 18e. So, yes, it sounds like Apple is breaking its old pattern, but it doesn't stop there. If everything goes according to plan, fall 2027 will bring the second generation of the foldable iPhone, along with the new iPhone 19 Pro series and an iPhone 19 Slim or Air, with an even larger display than before. Basically, Apple is thinking about more phones, released more often, with some arriving in spring and others in fall. The E-Series could become an annual spring product. And the foldable iPhone, which hasn't even launched yet, might get a yearly update cycle like the rest of the lineup. 